This is Stephen and Jen with Iowa Backyard Farmer. Stephen's behind the camera, but he's going to help us anyway. This is transplant week for our plant sale, and we are um, knee deep or more in plants. We've done probably over 1,500 tomatoes already. There's more to go. We have peppers behind that, um, flower baskets, everything's going this week. And so we thought we'd take a minute, but just a minute to show you what we do when we transplant, why you need to, when you should, and how it all works. So why why are you transplanting? Why didn't we just start everything in the greenhouses? Aha! <laughs> okay, so this tray holds 72 little pots, seven trays worth. And if you can see any of the greenhouse behind us, this week with our tomatoes, we've filled two and a half 30 foot long greenhouses with six foot tables on them. There is not enough space in my whole house <laughs> for tomatoes. You start small because that's the lights you have. And when they get bigger, they need more space. They need more things. And so we transplant them up to give them the space they need, but we're making the best use of our resources. Yeah. So we could have done this like next week or maybe last week. Why are you doing it this week? Okay, and this is a good question. One is that we're watching the weather because propane is expensive. Two, we're looking for timing. Usually transplants need two to four sets of real leaves. These are kind of on the big end. I'll show you. This is one of our Tappy's heritage. And you can see these leaves down here. These are the seed leaves, the cotyledon leaves. They don't count. Here's one set of true leaves. Here's two sets of true leaves. And just coming up in the middle, you see a third set and if you look at the root ball you can see that it's nice and firm and there's roots all the way around it this is going to be really easy to transplant if i wait very much longer um, it could get root bound they'll start to tangle they'll they're really hard to water even now it's a it's a trick to keep everything watered because you have more roots to dirt and they'll dry out faster so we want to transplant them to keep them healthy growing and happy Give them a little more space. Yep. So these ones look pretty good. Sometimes we get tomatoes that are a little more stretching for the sky. We've practiced or we've trialed some different light lights this year. And some lights um, don't necessarily make them leggy, but it makes them grow really fast. And so um, what do you do when you get stuff that's maybe a little taller than you expect? <laughs> this is a good question. And I brought a sample. This isn't a tomato. This is this is a tomatilla and they grow super fast and as you can see they um they're a little floppy they're a little thin one of my favorite things to do let's see if i can pull one out for you um and tomatillas are kind of like tomatoes and we can do the same principle for either one if you can zoom in real close on that you can see those little hairs on the side of the stem Tomatillas, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, if they're a little bit leggy, bury it deep. So when I plant this one, I'm going to plant it all the way up to there, and then it's going to get a new chance. All of this down here is going to grow new roots, and I'll end up with a stronger, happier plant at the end. But if you just put this out in your garden just like this, the wind's going to catch that, and tomatillas are, tend to be a little brittle, and it'll snap. So can you do that with everything, or do you just need to focus that type of deeper planting on the on the uh, Solanaceae family? So the Solanaceae family is pretty good about that. You can plant peppers deeper, tomatoes, eggplants, like I said, the tomatillas. Um, if you try that with strawberries, you will kill them. They, they If you do not plant them so the crown is above the dirt, they will rot and die. Um, the brassica families, cabbage, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, you can plant them a little bit deeper, like the kale and things. If you've got it and it's stretched just a little bit, you can plant it one to two inches deeper. I usually keep it right below the cotyledon leaves. So I would plant it, again, still, you could come up to cotyledon leaves, but don't go higher for the brassicas. So what would you not transplant? Okay, so this is a good question. Everybody wants to start everything in their garden. And if you have started all of your seeds um, inside, that's great. Carrots, I will tell you, are a little hard to transplant, <laughs> as are radishes, rutabagas, beets. You might sense a trend. All of your root crops, um, if they've got a taproot, they're hard to transplant. And that counts for trees and other things, too. Tran 
tap roots are hard to transplant. And what things are maybe iffy you could, but you have to do it right? So some things that are iffy, um, I would put beans and peas and squash in that category. You can transplant them. You can get a bump on your season. You can get some real advantages, but they don't love to be transplanted. So they're not like tomatoes where I'm going to start them early and then bury them deep and try again and they're going to keep growing. I'm going to plant them once pretty quick to when I want to plant them out. And I'll plant them out when they just have a couple leaves um, when they're, before they get too big. If you started your... Um, if you started a pumpkin a month ago and it's got four leaves and this little teeny root ball, just plant another seed. Um, they will not grow as well. But if for beans and squash and cucumbers and melons, all those things, you can get a little head start. Um, just don't start them too early and only plant them once and then be kind of tender with them when you put them out in the garden. Yep. Okay. So let's take a look and have you, you plant some. Let's give us some of your techniques. Okay, so we have learned a lot. And so we grew these beautiful plants, and you're hoping that they're going to make beautiful tomatoes. Um, and right now they're watered really well, and they're really moist. If you are transplanting and you're like, well, I'll transplant it first, and then I'll water it later, this is a bad plan. <laughs> I, I remember our, <laughs> This is a terrible plan. Yeah, I remember our first year where we, we pulled stuff out of the plugs. We put them into dry potting mix. We put them out into the cold greenhouse and they were the most sad. It was pathetic. a we sad, thought, we thought we killed everything? them all. So what happens is that if this, this plug, if it's dry, it doesn't want to absorb water. So even if you put it into a nice pot that is totally moist and this was dry and then you watered it, this would stay dry. I have tested this. <laughs> it works much better if this is damp or moist and this is moist and they're about the same and then I can plant them together so we'll practice this I'm going to take off those cotyledon leaves and then I'm just going to pop that down in there see I'm going to bury it I could go clear up to the top I'm just going to go to those first set of true leaves we're not packing that in but um so it takes a little practice to get it just right because if you if you leave it too loose and then you water the soil, well, yeah, it, it, it'll go you know halfway down the pot. But if you do it too full, then there's no there's no extra uh, you know half an inch or so that will hold the water when you do water it. Yeah, like I said, we've been out. we've been training the kids because we've done fifteen hundred of this and um, show you a video of what not to do. Right, um, is you do not cram your potting soil into the pot because then there's no room for roots and it's going to be really hard. But like you said, you don't want to just like, oh, we're going to fluff it in and then there might be an air pocket and the whole thing collapses on you later. That's true. Yep. So nice and loose. We're not going to press down on it too hard. And we're just going to pop those in like that. In the case of tomatoes, we're going to plant them deep because that's going to help the root development. It'll make a nicer, stronger plant. If it's stretched on you in your inside lights, you can recover from it at this step. These will stay in here for another mm, three to six weeks at the very end. And then they've got to go out into the garden and they'll be super tall, healthy plants. <laughs> yeah. So can, uh, can we you uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the label. Oh, something, something that uh, the, so yeah. Um, so we're gonna use we're gonna use moist soil on both sides. Picture your your transplant. Picture this as a goldfish, right? You don't want to shock it. So we're doing that, and then because we want to remember what it is that we've planted, we're gonna put a label on. But it's easier to do that when the pot is dry and clean and your hands are dry and clean if you were to stop now and be like oh yeah i'm gonna put a label on while well, it's all crummy it's not gonna stick real good that's way harder just put them on before you even fill up your pots yep and i'll i'll make a note i'm the one who's kind of detail oriented for this kind of stuff i really like it when our, our kids do most of the the labeling i really appreciate it when they put the labels at the top so when uh they pots are put into these these in this case uh, uh, the trays the, tr the 10 pack trays you can still read the name if you put it halfway down you can't read the name and if you can't read the name it's also more likely to stay wet and and, and then it'll soak off and then it'll soak off and yeah. so uh, just little details that makes a difference for us also a handy tip that we've learned that hopefully you don't have to learn the hard way is we 
some people are like, well, you could save time and just print these off on the printer. Um, and not all things that you write with are durable in the sun. So we use a Sharpie or a garden marker or something permanent because um, regular markers and pens will fade and you won't know in a month what you've planted because it'll be gone. The sun will have erased it. <laughs> yep, very good. Anything else you want to cover today? Okay. Um, just one more thing is that we're not going to rip it out by the top. So I see this a lot and you've spent a lot of time growing your beautiful tomato. You do not grab it from the top and just pull and hope. See how that's pulling the whole tray up? You can damage your stem. So kind of tip it to the side, give it a little squeeze, loosen it up, especially if it's got good roots and let it, let it slide out. So you're not, um, pulling everything apart. I show you a more alarming one with our our basil. So we've got all our basil ready to go. And I asked Stephen if I could like sacrifice one to show you what not to do. And he was like, no, no, not the basil. But we do not just grab a clump full of basil and just and just lift it up. Do the same thing, tip it on the side, kind of give it a little squeeze, and then pull it out. Um, You'll not rip your roots or damage your stem that way. So I hope this was helpful for you. Hope you're having a great time. We're in the garden. It's just a few weeks and, and we'll be putting all this stuff outside for real. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.